Okay, first things first, let's talk clips. There's a, a couple of different kinds that we use and we generally stick with the, they're the steel clamps, the big clamps and the small clamps. We call these baby clamps. Um, these are just the big large clamps, the C clamps. Uh, you can also get a paddle clamp, which has these little paddles on, which are useful in some situations in the steel stud, but mainly stick with the standard clamp. Uh, these ones are, are definitely more useful than the, than the paddle clamps. Paddle clamps have their place, uh, but the, the regular ones are, are the best. You can see I have a lot of clamps. When you get good at steel stud, you'll have tons of them, trust me. The, the router for drywall is pretty standard. You can have uh, different bits, different ends. Uh, this is a standard point and which is a straight tip. And then you have your guide point tip, which has got a little uh, guide on the end of the bit. Now the guide point is good for doing boxes. Okay, cutting out uh, electrical boxes. But the standard point bit is good for everything. You can cut your tops, you can cut your boxes. Uh, this is more of a professional bit, whereas the guide point is like a rookie type of bit. I use the standard point for everything. Um, I just have guide points to, I don't even know. I probably just picked them up along the way somewhere, but the standard bits are the only ones I use. You can also change out the, the coupler inside of the router and you can get bigger ones as well. For commercial, the smaller ones are the best. And uh, for residential, the bigger ones are actually, there's like a, a quarter inch one or whatever that's pretty big, uh, that is, is, is really well liked amongst the residential guys. This is the drywall gun. Okay, now these don't have batteries in them, but this is the drywall gun, the cordless drywall gun. Um, this is the shaft, okay? The shaft with number two Phillips bit, okay? We use number two Phillips bits in drywall and steel stud. Um, it's really simple, they just load in to your, your gun and this is your top, right? And then you can select your depth with the nozzle, okay? And um, go cordless. The more you can go cordless and steel set and drywall, the better your life is gonna be, trust me, okay? So we have the shaft, we have the number two Phillips bit, and uh, this is our uh, nozzle cover, okay, for our depth. Okay, so next we have the impact gun. The impact gun is essential for steel stud framing, okay? Metal stud framing, you need to have it. Again, you have another shaft with a number two uh, Phillips bit. We do not use Robertson, we don't use anything else other than the number two Phillips, that's it. So bit-wise, it's easy to, know, easy to learn. You can buy them in different packs, you know, and, it, and they're, they're, it's pretty, pretty worth it. It's well worth to buy it in big bulky packs, okay? The, now the drywall gun itself uses, we, we have, this is the standard uh, phosphate screw, okay? This is an inch and a quarter drywall screw, okay? You can see the number two Phillips end, it's pointy and it's black, okay? That is the regular drywall screw, inch and a quarter. Then we have the, the zinc coated uh, screw, which is uh, for heavy gauge. You can see it's got a self-tappering end, so we call these self-tapping drywall screws, okay? These are heavy gauge self-tapping drywall screws, inch and a quarter long, okay? Then you have your two inch screws. These are your two inch regulars, and the same thing for the heavy gauge. You can have two inch uh, heavy gauge self-tapping screws as well, uh, but they're just a little bit longer, okay? This is for like double layer drywall. Again, number two Phillips, always gonna be a number two Phillips. These are board to board screws. Now they look like the regular drywall screw, but they're much fatter. Set, hence their nickname, fatties, okay, or fat boys. Drywall, board to board, laminating screw. That's what that boy is right there, okay? So it's a little bit bigger, fatter, with a coarser thread. Uh, fine thread, fine thread screws are for steel, and you can get coarse thread uh, screws for wood. Now, as far as framing for the impact gun, there's only two types of fasteners that we generally use. And they're basically, they're called Kelly screws, framing screws, uh, whatever you want to call them, okay? So we have the black ones, again, the phosphate, the pointed tip for light gauge steel. And then you have the self-tapping one for heavy gauge steel, okay? So these are framing screws. I don't know if you can see them good. There you go. See, framing screws. So you got black for light gauge and uh, the zinc for the heavy gauge. <clears throat> this is your shotgun, okay? This is your uh, powder actuated fastening gun. So the, the, the Hilti, the shotgun, whatever you want to call them, they, they, they come with 
two types of ends. We use the long ones for concrete, the small ones for steel, okay? For steel to steel, and then this is steel to concrete. Simply load it in. It's pretty simple to use. I have a video, I'll link it here on how to use the DX351. Uh, you will have two different strips or shots, we call them, right? The green is for concrete, the yellow is for steel, for shooting into steel. Uh, you can use the green or for the steel as well. You can turn up the strength on the gun. Uh, the greens are the most popular type. Uh, very rarely will you use a red, okay? But the how it goes is the green and the, uh, the yellow is more powerful, okay? So the yellow is more powerful than the green. You need to get a 25 millimeter Olfa knife, okay? This is your utility knife, uh, blade, whatever you want to call it. The 25 millimeter Olfa is the way to go. It can cut insulation, it can cut uh, drywall. It cuts nice straight drywall because it's, it's strong. The blades are strong. If you buy the small Olfa knife with the skinny blades, like the, like the, these are fat, right? We'll say slim blades, then you can, the, the lines aren't as straight uh, as with the, this. Plus you can do a lot more with this. Five eighths, you can carve your 45s easy. Um, it cuts insulation like nothing, okay? So go with the 25 millimeter Olfa knife, utility knife, whatever you want to call it, okay? <clears throat> now your tape measure. I know this is sounds silly, but the tape measure is important because you notice that this is an imperial only tape measure. You don't want a metric tape. You don't want metric on your tape at all. In fact, you don't want um, a, a dual tape, which has metric and imperial on it. You only want one or the other. The reason being is you want to be able to read the tape from both sides of it. Okay, this is very handy when it comes to drywall and steel stud. Well, pretty much for anything, in my opinion. If you need a metric tape, get a metric. All right, for everything else though, use an imperial tape, uh, imperial only. The butterfly clip is a very important tool because this is what we use to clamp the tape on this track while we draw our centers. So we, we can draw long centers and not have to keep holding this side down. The butterfly clip will do it for us, okay? So make sure you have a butterfly clip and an imperial only tape measure. The 25 foot is perfect, okay? When you're, when you're more advanced and you, and you get to learn the trades, then you'll, you'll have different tapes, like 40 footers and whatnot, but get the 25 foot to start. Squares, this is your two foot square, okay? So it's obviously two feet, right? Uh, this is a, a handy tool for layout and doing things like layout on the drywall and whatnot, but uh, yeah, your two foot square. This is the combination square. A lot of guys use one foot squares, but I use the combination square because it's simply, I can, I can adjust it, right? The, 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 where, the, where the, the square part is, I can adjust that with this. So the combination square is a beautiful, beautiful all around square for steel stud and drywall. This is what's called a framing square, which is only good for framing. Uh, I use this when I'm in a, in a rush, okay? Because this is what it's called, a speed square. So I'll use this when I'm squaring things like lines on studs or whatnot, or, or squaring studs on, in the track, something like that. But this is called a framing square or a speed square. <clears throat> you have your flat bar. Now flat, bar come, flat bars come in all different sizes and uh, shapes, believe it or not. Uh, but this is a flat bar, very important for both steel stud and drywall. Uh, you can take out old pins, whatnot, if you need to remove, like move your track or whatnot. Flat bar is very important. Chalk line, okay, this is your chalk line. Chalk line is used to obviously do layout, but we use our chalk line to, to chalk lines on drywall and things like that for cutting, okay? So uh, a chalk line is, is, a, is a must if you're doing any kind of steel stud framing or drywall. <clears throat> this is your keyhole saw. This is for manually cutting drywall, okay? Your drywall saw, your keyhole saw, it's a simple tool just for quick cuts or whatnot. Uh, use your router for major cuts, but the keyhole saw is used for like quick random cuts. This is your drywall rasp. This is like a, like a, it'll smooth the edges of the drywall when you cut and snap your board. This is the tool that'll make this, the edges nice and smooth, okay? Your cuts, your butts or whatnot. So make sure you have a rasp and rasp your joints, guys. This is a drywall lifter. We'll use the lifter to lift the drywall to the ceiling. So when you drywall the ceiling first, you, you will use the lifter to lift that drywall sheet tight to the ceiling, okay? These are your snips. Now snips come in red, green, and yellow. 
If you're a framer or drywaller, you want red, okay? Red is the right-handed cutters, the green is left, and the yellow is straight. The yellows are used for tapers. Um, red is used for steel stud framers. We have the line laser. This laser is so important for framing and drywall. You will level your sheets with this. You'll level ceilings, you'll level studs. You'll, you'll, you'll mark your track lines and stuff like that with it. The line laser is very important. The green line is a, is, is a really handy one. You can see it better than the red. And you can see it's got vertical and horizontal lines. You use it to level doors. You, you just use it all the time. So a line laser is an absolute must. The Hilti's a little more money, but you can buy the Dewalt one for like 150 bucks Canadian. And that will have both lines, but it's a red one. This is the actual bracket for it, for mounting it for ceilings and stuff like that. Um, so you can see this is quite a setup, right? It's quite a lot of money as well. Okay, so this is a very typical setup on site for a steel stud framer or drywaller. You have the three foot benches, which are the most standard benches in our trade. And just a random piece of plywood you'll find all on a site anywhere uh, for the top. You can use it to cut your drywall strips, you put your chop saw on so you can cut your material up here. It's very, very handy. As far as a pouch goes, it's very simple. We use the suspenders, always have suspenders. Uh, padded pouch, padded suspenders are nice. Uh, the four pocket pouch, the screw pouch, is what I use. And we always use the electrician's pouch for our tools. As simple as that. Uh, always get an extra uh, clip for your screw guns. This will hold the drywall gun the and the impact. And I have a hammer holster right here as well. Uh, it's very important to have. It's simple as that, guys. If you have any questions at all about the tools that I just showed you or any tools at all, let me know down in the comments. I'll gladly answer your questions. And remember, I put the Amazon links in the video description for you guys to go and purchase any of the tools that you've seen here today. Um, that was, uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you guys all on the next one. This is Chris. Bye for now.